Hello there. We've not streamed in a bit, so here we are. And it seems as though people are going a little bonkers because of all this social isolation. But uh, so we're going to do a little hangout. Not quite sure what we're going to make yet. Something for eye view. Maybe a furniture item. Drop the furniture file into Blender. So this is 2.82. Let's make a topical item, a toilet paper throne furniture item. So First, we need to make a toilet roll, or a bog roll, as we call it. So we've got the cursor at the centre of the screen. Oh, where's the uh, zoom it? So we've got the cursor. At the centre of the screen. It's always a good idea to start there to make things easier because the object will be plopped into the screen at the cursor. So add and we want a cylinder. Add cylinder. It's going to be tiny so let's make this bigger. 50. Let's make it a little bit massive so that we can... Oh, there it is. And then 100. Right, so we have to... Well, we don't have to, but we can adjust the size of it before we move it, because as soon as we move it, we'll lose the ability to change these settings. So we want to actually make this 50. And we want to reduce the number of sides that the thing has, so reduce that down to, let's say, 16. 16. Generate UV, so it'll automatically create a set of UVs for us, which we can use later. And that's it. So there's our little toilet roll. It might be a bit too small. Make that a bit bigger. So scale. So you can either press the shortcut key or use the widget. And then if you click on the or inside the white thingamajig, it'll scale uniformly. So hold the control key down to snap. Let's get this to a reasonable size. It's a bit too big. Whoops. Dagnab it, I've just saved over the file. I'll have to re download that now. So that will be our toilet roll. Simple as that. So we want to give this edit mode a tube, an inner inner tube. Select top face, inset, so that's the I key or you're using the inset tool. And for this, if you hold the control key down it makes the tool behave wonky, so undo that. That'll do, and then we can extrude that downwards. Uh, viewpoint right. So extrude 
down. This is our tube. Delete the bottom face. Get rid of that because we don't need it. And that. Copy, duplicate. And we need to flip that inside out or upside down. So select, mesh, clean up, merge by distance. Whoops. Let's double check. So we can check which way the surfaces are pointing. Face orientation, we want them all to be blue. So these red ones indicate the faces are pointing the wrong way. So select all of those. Mesh, normals, flip. So they're now pointing the right way. So that is a simple toilet roll. Add some smoothing, so object, shade smooth, and then what we want to do add some sharp edges. So we're loop selecting, so that's control, uh, not control, that's alt, and then alt shift, and then click. That selects a loop. Edge, mark sharp. So what we need to do next, modifier, edge split, and then we want to set sharp edges only, because if we have angles selected, it may inadvertently create a hard edge or sharp edge based on that angle, 30 degrees. So disable that, and it'll use the sharp edges that we've marked. So that is a toilet roll. So I want to unwrap this. Whoops. And we have to reset the view because Blender doesn't, in the workspaces, Blender doesn't carry over viewport settings. So we can scroll quite a distance out from this in the layout workspace but in the UV spec we can't so we have to oops wrong one scale 100 clip start 1 clip end 5000 we have to do that every time we switch so it'll do the same thing with the shading one. See, so that's clipping as well because it doesn't carry over properties, which is a little annoying. It's 100. But we'll get to this later. But I'll set this now whilst we're here. One, 5,000. And there is our stuff. In fact, actually whilst we're here, Add a material, so that's a toilet roll. Materials, new, let's call this bog roll. Zero. And that's our material. Add texture, image texture. Connect those two together, so that's color output to base color input. And then what we want to do is load in an image that we already have, which is in, there it is, toilet paper. Open image. And there it's assigned it because the object already had a default UV map assigned to it when we created the object, but it's not, it's not 
correct yet. So we have to do some editing to the UV map, but that is material assigned. So that's a quick material setup. We don't need to do anything more complicated than that. Just assign um, an entry and then in shading workspace, which we're in right now, we just add a texture node. So UV editing, select our object. So that's the default UV map that's created. We might be able to use some of that, but it's not mapped to our toilet roll in the image editor. So we have to make sure always that we select the object and its UVs and then in the image what's so it that's browse browse image to be linked data block yeah browse image to be linked so click that and we should have our toilet roll somewhere toilet paper there it is and that's our texture and if we can see that might be able to just see the texture but so quick a quick um, overview of the texture so depending on how you want to UV map your object that'll determine how you actually create your texture because we've got this split into three so we've got at the top we've got the at the actual sheets of paper then we've got the cardboard tube which is the bit in the middle and then we've got the rim this bit as another section and if you want you could have the two pale colors next to one another and the cardboard at the bottom uh, but in this instance it doesn't really matter about that because that prevents or mitigates some of the texture bleeding that can sometimes happen because of the way that the UVs are unwrapped so with this, what we want to do is select, so we're in face select, and we want to select the outside loop. So alt click, and then we can just make some adjustments to this. Make that a bit bigger. Can't really see the texture on screen. But it is there. The inside cardboard tube. So we need to unwrap this. And we can do that as a cylinder. Or just selecting an edge. Mark that as a seam. So edge. Uh, mark seam. Highlights orange. Select that inside loop again. So that's face select. So that's the UV as it currently is. So what we want to do is unwrap that properly and it'll do that. What we can do with this is because it's the inside of the cardboard tube, uh, it's inside of the toilet roll. We can roughly position this on the dark area and just smush it down. And that gives us, I don't know how well this comes off on the screen, but that gives us, so that's the spiral that's often on the inside of a toilet roll. So we can have that spiral, spiraling down, whoops, spiraling down the inside of the toilet roll. Nice. For the top, we have to do this manually. So we need to set, so we need to edge select. Yeah, those are the two same. Edge select, edge, mark seam. And all this does is split the UV so that we can flatten it out. 
do the same on the other side. So that's the U key. If you have if you have your mouse cursor over the 3D view and you press the U key, it opens the UV mapping menu where you can unwrap. But if you have the key, if you have the mouse over the UV editor, it'll just automatically unwrap because it assumes that's what you're going to do. So deselect that so we can just grab these and just move them. And then next comes the laborious bit, unwrapping this as a flat strip. So we have to manually select individual vertexes and move them because the UV map is relative to the shape of the object. So you can't force it into a different shape like that. So if we want it to lay out flat, which is actually what we want it to do, you can't force it to do that. You have to manually do it because it's using the shape of the mesh itself to define what the UV map should look like. And it shouldn't take too long. Oops. I missed one. What have we done there? Oh, I see. what this then allows us to do so we've got this roughly done switch to island select again don't know how clearly the pattern will come up but as we move so what we can do move that onto this bottom section so we have this sort of linear texture that translates itself to the side of our toilet roll. And to set, well, we'll actually straighten this out first. So manually select individual vertexes. So I'm using the shortcut keys for this. So instead of clicking the selection buttons, so we've got ver for vertex, uh, for UVs, we've got vertex, edge, face, and then island, which is the entire section of the UV map that we've got selected. So vertexes, just selects individual vertexes or vertices, individual edges, or groups of, and then faces, or groups of, and then islands, or groups of, if we had another island. So let's edit this. Ooh, we need to snap to pixels. UVs, snap to pixels, corner. Let's reset that to make sure everything is snapped. Always a good idea to do that so that oops. Vertex U vertex no yes, UV vertex placement is snapped to the pixel. So it means that the coordinates for each vertex relative to the pixels of the image. So if we zoom right in, we can see that we've got, so this is a 256 by 512. So there are 512 pixels that way, 256 that way. And each one is a grid or a unit of a grid. 
And what we want is for the UVs to snap to these corners. Because what it then means is that the coordinates for each UV is a whole or rounded number. So that could be 1.0 by 3.0. Whereas if they're not snapped, you end up with, uh, what's the word, floating points. So 1, 1, zero. so whatever the numbers are. And it's best to try and keep them snapped so that the numbers are whole. So let's just align these. And we can sort out their distribution next once we've just got them all snapped to the grid or snapped to the pixels. But it doesn't matter too much in this setting. So edge, edge, Oops. So because we're in vertex select mode, what we're doing there is a loop select. So that's alt and then click to select both vertexes on that edge. Otherwise, we'd have to keep toggling back and forth between our selection modes, so vertex and edge. So that's the UV map. So what we can do is rather than redoing that process on the top, what we can do is select all of that and delete it. Select the bottom face, duplicate that, so shift D. And move that. Whoops. Go back into side view. Up to the top. Yep, up to the top. Select all mesh cleanup. Merge by distance. Let's double check if that's the yeah, cut setting, so that's okay. Check the face orientation. So we need to flip those. So face, not face, it's mesh. Mesh, normals, flip. Whoops, did we have the whole thing selected? We did, didn't we? So undo that, so control Z. So we just want that mesh, normals, flip. face orientation and that's just a quick way of utilizing um, a part of the mesh that you've already done so you don't have to keep repeating the same thing over and over again so once you've done one you can remove other elements that might be duplicates and just reuse one that you've already done so you don't have to do them again but what you can then do and this is the step that is often missed so we've got two, the duplicates of one another. So we don't necessarily want that. So what we can do is select one of them and just move that over so that this top section now carries a slightly more unique 
UV map than the bottom, so they're not exactly the same. So another trick as well, particularly in this context with the toilet roll, is we want a little bit of overflow of let's go with that out so we can see this so we've selected this top loop I'm going to move that so that's the wrong edge so what we want to do is flip this upside down so select the UV and then it's uh, mirror Y, I think. There we go. Because what we're doing here is creating the illusion of cardboard thickness or thickness of the blue roll, the, the cardboard roll in the center. So we've overflown. Might be a bit too much, one pixel. Uh, two pixels, so one pixel is enough. Do the same on the other side. So that's probably upside down as well. It is. So select UV mirror Y axis. And that flips the cardboard to the inside where we want it. So we now don't have such a hard transition across the top down into the tube. So we've got our little, the illusion of thickness around the rim where the cardboard tube is. And again, that doesn't need any extra structure there. It's just UV placement. So that is our toilet roll. So let's save this. Save as we are in furniture. Yep, I know the words wrong. So how can we turn this into a seat? Basically duplicate it. So we've got the one object. So let's just position it where it needs to be. duplicated so shift D let's get a few of them so keep that one to one side because that's the original see what we're doing and then just move these into position let's move the avatar out of the way duplicate Duplicate. Hmm. 
Oops. What we can do with this is knock a couple of them over. Or we can tilt them. So there's a difference between how the widgets work. So the widgets in the toolbar, we've got our standard move, rotate and scale, but we've also got a universal one. And that changes the widgets, whoops, widgets appearance so that we've got all three types of action, move, rotate, scale, in the one widget. Resting against this one at the back. Make sure that it's sitting on the ground plane properly. Duplicate that. Let's do a couple of these as again make sure it's sitting on the ground plane. We just want to move that out of the way. Duplicate. So this is, let's get rid of these, where are floor, wall, and what's that one? Ceiling. The missing one. Weird. Hide. Hide. Right, so let me get the sitting thing back. Duplicate. So grab a couple of these. Duplicate. Shift D. Move those up. Set them, knock that one over, need to move that out of the way because of the avatar's legs, so what we can do is put that one up here.
be two more. Rotate. That is our toilet paper throne. So we've gone from a single object, which itself had elements that were duplicated and reused. So we've got our object. We've then duplicated that and just piled a load of stuff together as a seat. And the next thing to do is prep this for IVU. So let's hide that. So what we want to do now is grab all of these. So make sure we don't have anything else selected. So select none. So grab all of those. And move this to one side. Duplicate them. Move them out of the way. And then we want to join these together. So that's make sure one of these is active. So it highlights a slightly brighter orange. And then control J or object, where is it? Join. It joins all those together. Don't want to go too mad with cylinders because the poly count, the number of faces that the object uses, starts to balloon quite a lot. So we've got our face count down at the bottom there, which we need to pay attention to, which at the moment is 1,408 faces which is quite high for a furniture item. Right, so to prep this as a furniture item, now that we've got our single object, hide the seat, unhide the seat. So we want, don't want wall, we want the floor. So where's that one? That's weird, that should be hiding itself, so hide. So this is the furniture node. We don't need the cube. So we can hide that. We need this wire outline object, and this is the root node of a furniture item. So now that we've got our mesh, what we want to do is position the mesh relative to that node. So grab it and just position it where we want the furniture item to be relative to it. Yep, that's it. Switch to edit mode. Make sure everything is selected. Select all. And then in object data properties, we set up a vertex group. That's this section. So we add one, and this one is called root, uppercase R double O T. And that is assigned to everything, so we then click the Assign button. And we can test that. Deselect, and it'll deselect everything. Select, selects everything. 
So exit edit mode. Next step, make sure the mesh is selected. We want to be in modifiers, modifiers, add modifier, armature. So click that and uh, toggle it up to the top of the stack. So the panel is a stack and the order in which these individual units appear does matter when objects are being exported to FBX for IMVU. So the armature should be at the top. So we can toggle its placement by clicking the up down arrows. Right, so the object that we want to use, so if we click on the eyedropper, click that and then we can click on, oh it's not letting us do it. Go on, click on it. Okay, we'll have to do it manually then. Select the object, then the cube, and then we'll have to do it the hard way, which is Control P or Parent, or there it is, Parent Object. Oh, that's right. Can't use. Yeah, that's right. You can't use armatures on. Yeah, you can't use armatures with nodes. That's right. You have to parent it. So this node now controls that object. I have to get rid of that, otherwise it'll cause problems on export. So get rid of the armature. So we could export this. Let's save this. Save as. Let's do a quick test. So we can export this. So select the root node, then the mesh. So uh, file, export, FBX. And then if you can't see this panel on the side, it toggles with this cog button. So click that. So you want selected objects. Uh, apply units, that's okay. Geometry, apply modifiers. We want that because we have smoothing set. Armatures always disable. Add leaf bones. No animation, so disable that. Check the name, check the file location, and then export. And this, we should then be able to... import into IMVU. So we want to derive a new product, rooms and furniture, and furniture item. Where's ceiling? There used to be ceiling object. Go. So that's the default, the chair. So to import the thing that we just exported, FBX import, load FBX, and then browse to set now furniture, furniture, what did we call it? Throne. And there it is, thrown to, open. Oh, forgot to name it. We'll give it a name. But we can just test it now. So, uh, for furniture, the mesh ID is zero, I think. I remember off the top of my head. It's brought in our bog roll material. Change the scale, 0 0.01. Rename room nodes, disable that. It'll cause all sorts of problems. And then import. 
and we'll get success material slots overridden that's okay import changes and there is our bog roll there's no seat with this so this is just a check that it all works and you might note that it's brought in the texture for us which is not two-sided, which is why we need to make sure that the mesh surfaces are always pointing in the right direction. Could probably squash some of those. So that's tested and it's working. So the next thing is to add our sitting seat node. So for this, what we can do this is why we use the template because all of this stuff is provided and it's all set up ready to go so we don't need to do anything per se to the seat node set and that is um, the seat node the main sitting seat node that's this one and then we've got the handle that's the thing you click on and then we've got the catcher and pitcher nodes. Those are the ones where the avatars stand when they are doing something interactive with one another. So to move this, just click the seat node and just move that and it'll move the whole group. And all we need to do is just position that relative to our mesh. And then what we need to do is parent all of these nodes. Let's get rid of that. Song. We need to parent all of those to the root node of the furniture item. So we select all the seat nodes first. So shift click. And then we shift click the root node last, the furniture item, uh, the furniture node. And then object, parent, object. Oh, we need to keep transform, otherwise it does that. Uh, object parent, where is it? There used to be a way of doing this. Uh, Tropy, why isn't that in the list? That's most annoying. So what you have to do then, once you've got your object selected and the root node is the last one, we need to use control P to get the set parent to pop up to appear and we want object keep transform. And what that does, as we saw with ordinary parenting, parent object, it offsets the objects. We want to avoid that and that's what keep transform does. It keeps the position the objects are currently in and parents them to the object that's the active object, which is the root node. So control P, keep transform. Everything gets parented, so we can check that. And it's all in place. So now, let's save this. Save as number three. So to export, we can export this now. So select the nodes first. Just get rid of these standing ones so it's easy to see what we're doing. Shift click, shift click, mesh, then shift click the node, the root node last. So those are all the objects that will be exported as part of the project. We don't have to change the name unless there's dozens of seat nodes. So this is seat01.sitting. Yes, yeah, so those are all dot .sitting apart from the handle. Let's rename the mesh actually. So object properties. Oops. We want this to be bog roll. Bog roll. 
bolt mesh. Double check our material, so that's bog roll zero. Save. Right, let's do that again. Node, shift click, whoops. Shift click, shift click, shift click, mesh, then root node. So those are all the objects that are going to be exported. File, export, FBX. Do we do. Yes, FBX. So same settings as before, selected objects. That's okay. Units, that's okay. Geometry, apply modifiers, that's okay. Armature, add leaf bones is disabled. And bake animations is disabled. Remember that, rename that three. We're in the right place, export FBX. So that's exported. Back into IMVU, create, derive, furniture, want furniture, there's the chair, so that's the chair, FBX import, and this, what do we call it again, throne, throne 3. So there's our bog roll dot mesh, that's zero. We've got our material, disable or uncheck, rename nodes, 0 0.01, and then import. Success, that slot's going to be overridden. Import changes, apply changes, and there is our bog roll, and we now have a seat. So that's our pile of bog rolls. That's our toilet roll throne thrown. That is how you create a furniture item from toilet rolls. And presumably that's what everybody's going to be doing with all the toilet paper they've been buying. So let's save that, save as. And then, of course, just take your um, your um, screenshot and then upload to the catalogue. So, that's a simple furniture item. Uh, we might have time to do something else with this. So, that is a furniture item with a default sitting node. What do you need to do if you wanted to add a custom seat node, to, uh, not a seat node, a custom pose to this? Well, save that. All you have to do New general. What you have to do is use the pose file. So that's either the female or male pose file. It doesn't really matter for this. Open. So you can either use the the older or the traditional pose file or the updated one. The alternative post file, which is where is that? Alternative post file. There it is. So that's the alternative post file. Right. So this is what you need to use to create your pose. So the first thing you need to do file append we need to browse to the file that we just created we 
which is there. So click on that, or double click, and then we'll get uh, during uh, when appending blend files are treated like zip or raw archives so they're archive files that you can um, browse down into so when you click on a file you're essentially opening a zip file uh, that's essentially how they behave so double click and you get the contents of the blender file and for appending generally speaking you always want to be in the object folder so this is all the objects that are contained in well, not that file, but in the file that we were just making the toilet seat in. So there's our mesh bog roll. So click that to select it and then append and our bog roll appears. What we might also want is append where is root? Right, so we want root. This is that wireframe cube. We want root. We want sitting. Yeah, seat 01 sitting. We want these two nodes. Because what this does, whoops, this gives us, so append once selected and they're brought in. So what this does is it gives us a reference point for let's double check to make sure that oh come on oh it's in pose mode that's why right what we need to do here what we need to do here is just connect all of these bits up that we just imported because what we're going to do is use this as a reference, a positional reference, for the pose that we're going to create. And to make this easier, we just want to parent them together. So Control P, keep transform. Right, so for custom poses for furniture, the seat node, so whether it's seat 01, uh, well, whether it's dot standing or dot sitting, the node is the reference point for the pose not necessarily the furniture so what we need is to select all of that so that it all moves as one unit or we can select the root and we need to position so the seat node has a origin point this little dot in the center and that needs to be positioned going to wireframe for this that needs to be positioned roughly at zero or oh, grid zero 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 so that's zero x zero y zero z because that's the root point for the avatar. So we can see that the avatar armature also has that little node and that's at zero, zero as well. So if those two match up, whatever is done to the avatar for a pose will uh, translate and position itself correctly relative to the item. So let's make a pose. So pose mode. Oh, it's going to do that again. Need to save this. Save. Save as TP. Oops. TP seat pose. There's a weird bug in Blender for some peculiar reason. Can't 
can't select the bones even though we're in pose mode which is annoying so we sometimes so save the file so we save the file new and then reload see if that works okay that didn't work so close that restart sure why it does this. So we should be able to select the bones of the avatar. Oh, there we go. That's really weird why it does that. So let's create a pose. Let's do something simple. Out. remember to rotate the hips not the thighs the thighs spin they don't rotate you need to use the hips for that so that one goes on there That's that. Spine. Got to be careful not to bend those backwards too much. And because we have auto insert enabled, we don't have to keep pressing the I key to get the insert lock rot menu up. So if that's not visible, so auto insert is this button at the bottom. It's in the timeline, so I've got the timeline at the bottom running along here. But that's the timeline, and then we can toggle it on off. But for your pose, we need to be in dope sheet and then action editor. And what we can do with this as well is now which one is it? Is it that one? Yes, it's that one. So disable this button. What that does is it shows you all the bones 
that are part of the avatar skeleton. So neck. So that's yeah, that's O one, O two, O three, ouch. And O four you can rotate, but it's not generally used because that's um, that's used more often for the it's to control the joint between the head between the head and the mesh. So there's that joint that runs where that where that is, and that acts as a connector for the weight paint values that control that deformation of the joint, not necessarily that part of the neck. Whoops. Uh, where's pose mode? Whoops. There we go, pose mode. Ow. Reveling in the toilet paper. No one has more TP than me. Oh, hi, Gaff. Oh, Mr. Yaff. So that is our pose for the furniture item. <laughs> yes, we've been holding toilet paper. So let's save that. Save as two. It's always best to incrementally save so that you don't save over the top of the previous version so that you've got a restore point to go back to. So say, oh, let's, uh, yeah, we can leave an avatar. Save as. Right, so for poses, there is an, an important thing to keep in mind. Uh, so we just briefly went over the fact that, before we did the pose, that the seat node and the avatar skeleton root node well it's master uh, female o3 master root both of these objects have that tiny little origin point and the two of them need to match up by default the pose file is set up for that. So the important bit is that when you are posing your avatar relative to your furniture item, just notice something. When you're when you are posing the avatar relative to your furniture item, you don't move the black bone, which is female O3 master root, what you do is you pose all the other bones in the skeleton except female master root. So if this avatar were moving, 
you move the avatar using uh, that's the pelvis node you, you move the avatar using the pelvis node rather than female 03 master root and that's because if you move that bone the black bone that's the bone IMVU actually uses to determine the position of the avatar in IMVU so if that's if that's animating if that's moving it can cause problems uh, within IMVU because IMVU doesn't know where the location of the the bone is if it's moving so this is the thing with um, I mean this is a um, a lying down pose and we didn't rotate or move the root node uh, the root bone we moved the pelvis bone to adjust the height of the avatar we didn't adjust the height by moving the black bone so don't move that that always stays put it always stays anchored essentially to zero point uh, not zero point zero 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 xyz So that's our pose. Let's do a couple of quick adjustments. Yeah, it's uh, not been streaming for um, a while. Um, lots and lots of other projects on the go all the video tutorials and what have you so might be doing some more though what with all this um, what's it called social social um, social, social isolation so maybe doing some more but don't know. So that's the pose, so save that. I want to export this now. Uh, right, so for that, we want to select the armature. So exit pose mode, select the armature, file, export, FBX, uh, avatar. And for that we want selected objects, apply unit, we don't need to bother with apply modifiers, armature again always disable add leaf bones and then with animation we need to disable NLA strips and force start end keying. So disable those two and what this does is it forces Blender to format the FBX file so that each sequence, each animation, oh, there is something that we have to do, I've forgotten to do. Each sequence is a separate, um, it's delineated in the FBX file, otherwise it'll export everything into the same sequence. We want to avoid that. So let me just export this so that, um, but, this is an FBX file, so what we have to do, this is a static pose. So select all, make sure, so press the I key to insert, so or, pose. Where is it? Oh, animation, insert keyframe, lock, rot. We can't use scale, so location, rotation same data into another keyframe so move the timeline slider to frame five doesn't matter pose animation insert keyframe lock rot so we've now duplicated that and then we need to reset so that's pose um clear transform all So that resets the avatar to its original position. And this is important for FBX. Well, at least for IMVU's use. 
because the it's either FBX or IMVU doesn't understand that if we export the file uh, is it control shift no it's control up yeah so IMVU doesn't understand that there is actually some data here there is a pose between these two frame keyframes so we've got keyframe one keyframe five although the data is the same we do actually have a pose associated with that when this is imported into IMVU IMVU thinks whoops IMVU thinks because there's no change in the data between those two sets of keyframes it thinks that there's nothing going on in the frame uh, in the in the in the file so we have to create a reset so that there's an actual change in position data so the fbx and iview understands that there is something actually there in the file so we have to have this reset So let's just save over that. Yeah, um, the gaff is just asking about the quarantine. Uh, from what I understand, the PM and the cabinet is thinking of extending, uh, extending the uh, the stay order to stay in place, and making the penalties more severe. So. There's that. Right, so that's our pose. Now we can export. So switch back to object mode. So that's control tab. That's a shortcut. Armature, export, FBX. Selected objects. That's okay. Geometry again. Armature, that's okay. And those two, that's okay. We'll just save over the top. So export that. So keep that open. Just open another instance of Blender. Was it thrown? Yes, thrown. So with a custom pose, we have to make a slight modification to the seat node. Now I have to reference my notes because I can't remember how this is done. It's been such a long time since I've done a pose, furniture pose. Which is one of the reasons why the tutorials are written down. So tutorials... Whoops. So although this is Blender 2.82, these tutorials, I'll drop them in, copy link. These are what are going to be used for reference. Link location. So what we want just scan through this. Is it the other one? I think it's the other one. All right, furniture set up.
Yeah, it's been a long time since I've done this. Posing the avatar. Transform orientation. Right, that's right. What we need to do, so rename the let me just drop that link into Where's that gone? Oh, rename. I've not got that down as a menu option. Pose import. Oh, I have to go back over that tutorial. I've missed out a um so the section is rename the post spot node. So what we have to do, because at the moment the node that we've got references a um, default pose. References the default pose. So in order for this to link up with the custom pose that we created, we have to change the name of this. So double click in the outliner or in the uh, object editor we need to rename the sitting extension so dot sitting to dot uh, let's just go bog roll dot bog roll we don't do that to any of the other nodes for the seat just the uh, the main seat node and that identifies that node as a custom pose node which will latch onto the custom pose that we created so let's save that save as number four then we have to re-export this so shift click the nodes the furniture and then the root node or the mesh, then the root node, and then export FBX. So selected objects this time, geometry, apply modifiers, armature, disable, bake animations, disable. And this is number four. So export, NVU, create. Drive new rooms and furniture. Furniture go and import load FBX. Uh, Throne four mesh ID zero. Scale 0 0.01. Whoops. Fat fingers. Disable rename room 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 nodes. Got our material bog roll. Okay. Import bog roll meshes. No geometry. Why has it got no geometry? Let's see what that does. That's weird. Let's do that again then. Export FBX, selected objects. That's okay. Th 
furniture, export. So let's try that again. So get rid of that. No. FBX import, load. Thrown. Open. So zero. Zero point zero one. Materials okay. Disable. Import. There we go. That was weird. So there's our bog roll. And it has the seat node, but it doesn't have the sitting pose. Because the name has basically cancelled that out. So the avatar will stand there, but it won't sit. So what we now need to do is load the FBX that we created. And that's in avatar. So that's TP. What do we call that? TP seat pose. Where is that? Avatar. Well, I know it. Uh, so, load 2.8. There's TP seat pose. That's okay, we don't want any meshes. So it's brought in our pose, and what we want, there are a couple of example poses in the file, in the default um, post file, alternative post file. The one we want is generally going to be T pose, nine frames, uh, scale 0 0.01 again, disable rename room, uh, room nodes. And then we can import that. Import changes. Apply changes. And it still won't show up yet. So what we then have to do is in actions add. Now let me see. This is I have to check this again as well. Right, so that is the trigger is stance dot bog roll. That is room, same ensemble, and our skeleton, skeletal animation is available for use. Playback speed is not necessarily to set, but loops want zero, and then loops start. Well, actually, let's just import this and see what it does. Oh, is it going to play? Oh, what? That's right. Stance seat node name. So in action parameters, set the trigger property to activate the pose. This can be a specific word or phrase users type in chat to activate the action or a command that automatically starts the pose when the spot is used. For furniture items, the latter is more useful. The command for which is stance dot and then the seat node name that we created. So that was bog roll. Yeah, seat O one bog roll.
Oh, I wonder what... That's why. Duh. So now, is this avatar or room? I can't remember the place. Right, so... This is... This is the pose that we created, but because we had to do the thing image agree in Blender to get this to export as an FBX, so we've got the reset. So of course that means that IMVU thinks this is an animated pose, so it's now cycling through the pose that we created, uh, not the sequence, it's cycling through the sequence. So what we have to do is fix that with loop start, the frame that it starts at and the frame that it ends. So this loops infinitely. Apply changes and there is our pose. That neck is a little bit too aggressively bent. Ow. Let's just save this. Save as TP fog rule plus pose. Oops. Plus pose one. Ow, that neck really is quite bent out of shape. But that is custom furniture item with a custom pose. And then all you do, obviously, is um, take your screenshot and create your product page, upload. Yeah, that looks painful. So let's adjust that. So you can see, I mean, that's one of the other things that we have to, and this is particular to Blender, we have to watch out for how severely certain bones bend out of shape to, accommod uh, to accommodate the pose that we're trying to create. So in, let's do a side by side. So in Blender, we can see that the bones aren't actually that bent out of shape, but in IMVU that's quite a significant difference. Let's do room. Yeah, it's avatar. I couldn't remember whether it's avatar or room. So you'll have to do a bit of testing with your poses. And I'm guessing that's going to be bone o. What's that one? That's bone o. Neko two. Neko three. Let's tweak Neko four a little bit. Straighten that up. Whoops. Those are all in the wrong keyframe. So delete those. Make sure we're in the right keyframe. So let's try that. Save as. I'll oh, save over. Armature. Export. FBX. And then go through the same process again. Geometry. Armature. Disable that. That and that are okay. And then export. So let's create a new project so that we've got the old one as a reference because the file data is saved, it's cached in the project that's open. So furniture. Let's 
Let's import these. So FBX, load FBX. And it shouldn't matter which order the pose is brought in or the files are brought in. That's okay, import changes. Because all we're doing, 0 0.01, disable, disable, disable. All we're doing is loading in data into the editor, which we can then assemble into a product. So it doesn't, generally speaking, the order in which the FBX files are loaded, if there are several of them, shouldn't matter. Import changes, so we want to load up on this apply change. Load FBX. Furniture. Uh, throne for 0 0.01. Mesh ID is 0. Bog roll mesh material. Import. There's our bog roll. And there's our seat node. So all we need to do now stance dot bog roll avatar same ensemble. Hopefully this should have fixed the neck a little bit. So loops zero, that's infinite looping, and then frame one to frame two, and then apply changes. There we go, that's much better. So that's the, and that looks, let's move that to the side a little bit. It's still quite a way off in terms of uh, the neck or the head position, but everything else is fine. It's just those neck bones are always a bit awkward. And the same with the finger bones. So if you're doing a pose that involves the neck or the fingers, watch out for the way that those distort. So that's our custom pose on a custom furniture item. And therein ends the, um, oh, let's save that. Save as TP bog roll plus pose. And of course, upload when you're done. So therein is our uh, quick um, tutorial or stream. King of the world or queen of the world. You can keep your money. Oh, I know. Something else. So, close the, uh, minimize those. So, another instance of Blender. <laughs> Wait till you see this. I think you've probably seen this one already, Gaff, so. Um, but I'll go over this briefly because the question crops up. Where is it? Where is it? Toilet, toilet roll. Too many projects to search through. Oh, I know what it's called. It's just called bling fling. If I can find that.
I think that's it. Yeah, here we go. Right. So this isn't good. I'm just going to do an overview of this. Uh, because for Blender users, to get that, so this is an actual pose. See if I can open the, whoops. Open a local project. TP. Goes wonky. Um, so this is a a pose with a mesh attached to it, and within the context of what we're looking at, it's essentially an accessory because it's something that the avatar is holding in their hand. So it's not a clothing item or or anything like that. But in order to combine a mesh with a pose we have to use yeah it, it's it's amusing I shall you know we shall say it's amusing one is amused so in order for this to work for blender creators those using Blender, we have to use a pose file. And what you do with this is you append, in the same way that we just appended the furniture item into the pose file to create the pose for the throne. So we did the same thing with this. We appended that into same pose file so that's the alternative pose file you can recognize it with the red bones so essentially that's what we've done is appended the mesh the furniture mesh and the respective nodes uh, into the pose file so that we can create a pose relative to the mesh for things that the avatar either holds or are attached to the avatar. Why is that going that funny colour? I got this transparent. So what you have to do to get that to work is you have to append the mesh you have to append the mesh into the pose file as though it was oh that's why it's in wireframe there we go you have to append the mesh into the pose file in the same way that you do with the furniture item but what you then have to do is position the mesh relative to how the avatar is going to use it so in this instance the avatar is holding it and throwing a sheet of paper away so the vertex grouping that's associated with this the bone that the object is parented to is uh, in this instance is right hand and that locks the mesh to the avatar's right hand, which I think is that. It's this. Yeah, it's this bone. So the mesh has a vertex group. So if I select the mesh, edit mode. Whoops. It has a vertex group called right hand. So essentially what you're doing is setting up an accessory item 
but instead of the vertex group being attachment root, you're actually using the name of the bone as the vertex group that is going to control the mesh. And that is then parented or the armature control. Whoops. So the mesh in this instance has an armature control modifier because we've got an actual armature rig, a bone base rig. Yeah, the, the leg is, um, it's, it's carefree, you know, flinging the money away. Nobody cares. We. Uh, so what you're doing essentially is setting up an accessory. So you position the mesh where, where the, uh, positioning the mesh where it needs to appear. But there is one issue with this, and that's that the as an accessory, the object always stays true to its to itself. So if the mesh is selected as an accessory item, so if we were using the accessory skeleton, which is yeah which is that one so if we were using the accessory skeleton so let's open blender again that's this is another four instances of blender don't think you can do that with max so if i just drop in no, actually, I'll append it. Append. So that's the mesh. So and this is this is where you can see the difference. So if I enable the transform widget and I just move the object around, even in edit mode, the widget stays relative to the selection. So this is the accessory file. This is the actual accessory file that you need to use to make handheld accessories. So that's the glasses, hats, rings, whatever it is that you're making. But for animated accessories or um, accessories that are accompanied by an avatar pose, because the bones of the armature are set up so that they export a functional skeleton, it means that the mesh that's brought in doesn't, it isn't, um, I'm not quite sure what, it's offset essentially so even though the mesh is where it needs to be the widget is offset so even in uh, edit mode the widget offsets in really weird places and even as an object it's offset in weird places as well. So you have to watch out for that when you are trying to manipulate your object into place because the widget or the orientation of the widget doesn't necessarily correspond to the object itself. But with that said, the setup is essentially the same. Oh, that's the shape key editor, that's why. Where's the action editor? There we go. The setup is exactly the same as a, an armature, uh, not an armature, an accessory. So you append the file into the accessory file, latch your object, or 
or position your object wherever it needs to be in the scene. So let's just quickly position that in the avatar's hand. Can't disable all the text without doing it individually. So let's just do a quickie. So that's in the avatar's hand as an accessory. So you would then link that to where is the bone? It's hiding inside here. So there's the bone. Viewport display in front. So that's the bone that that's associated with. So those two things would be exported and then assembled in IMVU, attached to the avatar as an accessory. But for a pose, you do the same thing. But your attachment is to the bone as part of the skeleton. And if you get the vertex group set up correctly, the mesh will follow whatever the animation is set to do. And then, of course, what you do on export is select the skeleton and your mesh or meshes and then just export them as a unit and then assemble that into IMVU and that will get you the pose with a mesh. And you have to derive from the empty derivable. So that's the female or the male derivable. It doesn't matter which one. And that'll get you an animated mesh with a pose or an animated pose with a mesh. Let me just reload that. Uh, bring pose 9. Don't save. Uh, in no, it's not in, but it's more as texture. There we go. So that, and of course, for a complex animation, you've then got the uh, shape keys or morph. So the actual paper flick is a morph animation. And that's uh, that's quite tricky to set up. And that, yeah, that's very tricky to set up because of the 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 offset of the widget. So when you're trying to position the mesh, the widget doesn't correspond to the offset of of the object. Uh, the off uh, the widget is offset relative to the object. So when you're trying to position that mesh, as we can see here, it's not where the... So we are selecting the, what should be the, the up and down axis, which is the green handle, but it moves the thing backwards and forwards or left and right. So it's doable, but there's a weird offset going on. And that's how that was done. So we can do poses with meshes, animated poses. So yeah, that's two projects. So we've got a throne, the custom pose. I'll upload this later. And then we've got a bling fling. Oh, and another thing you want to watch out for with animated poses that have meshes. If they are set to run infinitely, over time they'll desynchronize because of the way that the avatar toggles between the default poses. So if your pose doesn't completely overwrite the default, when the avatar changes its position and switches it'll desynchronize 
the pose that you created with your avatar uh, with your mesh so that's another thing to watch out for which is why you don't see too many of these types of products that are animated going on for infinite amounts of time because over time they desynchronize so yeah that's uh, two projects to do with toilet paper right so I guess we should call it quits there and uh, try and do some more streaming. Ooh, crikey, we've been going for two hours. I hadn't realised. How fly times when you're fun having. Right, on that note then, uh, Thanks for lurking, the lurkers. Thanks for chatting in the chat, Gaff or Yaff. Yeah, they are. The morphs are really nasty to set up. Because there's no... I mean, ideally, the way that you would actually want to work, uh, want it to work, and it's the same with animations. <laughs> yeah. It's the same with animations. That what The way it should work is that you should be able to have a mesh selected and you should then be able to specifically assign an animation to that mesh. But the way that IMVU's system works, it, it doesn't work like that at all. So it makes it complicated when you start adding several animations and or several objects being animated. It means that there's no There's no clear determining factors that's, that s differentiates different meshes and the animations that are associated with them. So then when you add morphs to that, it gets even more complicated. Oh. Hi, Liana. Late as usual. <laughs> We're just signing off. Yeah, I'm just signing off. You'll be able to watch the archive of us making a um, a custom furniture item with some toilet rolls. Oh, and then talking about animated toilet roll. Because we've been going for two hours. Yeah, toilet paper. Yep, all right then. Well, on that note, on that sheet of paper, we'll call it quits because that's two hours and uh, hopefully do a bit more streaming because I guess with all this social isolation stuff going on that we um, need somewhere to hang out and talk creatory stuff. So, until the next stream, we shall see you anon, as they say. Bye for now. <laughs>